Hey everyone, back with the water cooled server here. Um, we've got the Gigabyte GA7 PSH2 dual E5 2620, uh, 64 gig of RAM, and a pair of EVGA 120, if I can talk, 120 millimeter AIO liquid coolers. And um, we've got them mounted up all nicely in the fan wall. And in the fan wall, we have it in the normal configuration the the radiators on this side and the 120 fans on the other side. We did have to bend the uh, fan wall tabs, and I, that was in the last video, so if you want to see that, it's in there. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mock up how the tubes fit. And the first thing you're going to do, move all of your wires out of the way. And we'll, we will take each one and see how it mounts up. I've already got the bracket mounted to this guy, but what I think the best the best way to do this um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, do you have to kind of play with the tubes tubing a little bit? I think for this guy we're going to mount it like this, so the EVGA logo logo is facing that way, and then we'll probably do the other one the same way. Uh, but play around with it and see what puts the least amount of strain on your tubing. I want both the logos facing the same way because I'm kind of uh, particular like that. And in order to do that, uh, we need to face them this way. Otherwise, this tubing, because it's so close to this processor, it's going to push out onto this side. So um, here's that. We're using the stock thermal pad, or it's really paste, but it's just very neatly applied paste. We're going to be using this for the E5 2620s, and if you're running something long, uh, something larger than the 2620, like uh, 2650, 2660, 2670, or 2650 V2, something like that, um, I would say anything over probably 90 watt TDP. I would switch out the thermal paste for GLID GC Extreme. You'll get a lot better performance. On something like this, uh, it's not really going to matter a whole lot. These are way overkill for these processors. So um, it does give me the option to upgrade in the future. And I have pretty much all the cooling power that I could possibly want in this server. Um, but yeah, so figure out your tubing situation. Um, it shouldn't be too much different for 1366 or 2011. and. Uh, yeah, so that's is what it is. Um, let me grab another one of these mounting brackets. I've already got one mounted up, but here is here is the mounting bracket for um, for the cooler. And let me see if I can get some uh, autofocus going here. So it has these plastic. Let me see. Come on, camera focus. All right, so it has plastic um, mounting rings at the end, and there's two positions. There's an inside position, and there's an outer position. And what you do is you just rotate them to the outer position on each one. And so we're going to be using the outer position for 1366 or 2011, and they're the same sockets like the same uh, screw spacing in between each one, but they use different different screws. And in the bag, you get both. And so what you're looking for are these. Come on, out of focus. All right. So the one with the ridged end and larger screw head is 2011 and the one with the smaller screw head is your normal desktop sockets or 1366 or 1356 so we're going to be using the 20, 2011 ones obviously and we'll just set the others aside, we'll put them back in the box if we want to change uh, sockets later and you just take them and the top of the, the bracket and you just push them through and then we'll lock in
Very, very simple. These coolers are super easy to mount once you're done uh, mounting the <laughs> once you're done mounting these, mounting them onto the processors is super, super simple. Um, and we're going to take our, uh, you know, take the protective cap off. And then you can take this bracket, and it'll only go on a certain way. And what you want to do is, when you turn it to lock it in, you want to make sure it's square with the tubing. So, I think in this case it needs to be like that. And you just give it a good turn, and it locks in. Much better than Corsair's mounting solution, by the way. Um, I'm very, very pleased with this. And this is super awesome. So I wonder if we could use... So let's, let's look and see whether it's better to use the rightmost cooler for the back one, or this one for the back one. I think this one will fit it's kind of putting a strain on the tubing. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use it for this one up here. And really all you have to do is just put it straight down and start tightening each one a little bit. By hand. There's a Phillips head on top if you do want to do the final torque down with the Phillips head. I might have put the wrong screws on this one. I think I did. I got two of them wrong. Oh. But you get for not paying attention. They are removable. It's just a little bit of a pain to do so. See if I can get the right ones. Let's try this again. So really you just want to gently tighten it down and do it in a cross pattern so you get even mounting pressure. guy in the corner, it's going to be a little bit harder, it might be easier to use a screwdriver. Yeah, it's going to be easier if I use a screwdriver. If I can find where I put a screwdriver. Check, make sure I got the right screws on each one of these. I did. I really didn't make, mean to turn this into a four or five part series, but here we are. And I apologize for that, but sometimes uh, you run into some obstacles. So what I think I'm going to do is, you know, if, if you guys need to see how these mount up, um, most of you are pretty familiar with the case and the fan wall and all that stuff, so you don't need to see my trial and error. Um, I'll mostly link to this video as to how to install them and how to configure it. Um, that's about it. Man, does that look nice. That that is so super awesome. So 
So yeah, so we've got our water coolers installed. Um, these are the pump leads, or the, the pump, uh, you know, three pin fans, fan connectors for the pump. Um, this board only has two, let's see, it's got one, two, three fan connectors. This is CPU fan, CPU one fan, that's CPU zero fan, and then that's a system fan. Um, I think that's it. Just double check. I don't see anything else. Um, so we're kind of limited on fan spots, but the nice thing is we have these Arctic, we have these Arctic uh, PWM sharing. So you can take one fan and plug it right into the next one. And since the pump doesn't have PWM sharing, I will be plugging the pump into the last one. And so we'll be plugging the pump into the, uh, the one in the back here with the 280 millimeter. And we'll do something with these wires. I don't know what, uh, probably just some zip ties and kind of hide them out of the way as best as possible. Um, but for now, I'll just kind of put them like that. And uh, we'll do, let's see. We got three 120s in the front. So I think the best thing would be to put These, well, so the pumps will always run at full speed because they're not PWM. Um, we'll put the two CPU fans on the CPU fan header here. And then again, we'll try to do something with the wire. Uh, make sure it goes under the tubing, of course. And then we'll take the, uh, the middle fan, plug that into the sys fan port here, in the very bottom of the chassis. And then we'll plug in our pump to that one. I don't want to use too much of the available power and split it too deep, but that should be fine. Um, if it's not, you know, I'll let you know, but I think that'll be fine. And so that's pretty clean. Uh, that's just with some cable management shoving it in, in, a, in a couple of different places, but um, hopefully this video has helped you and let's see if I can get a better shot of the board. and the setup. So hopefully this has helped. Um, I know it's been a little bit of a process, and I apologize for that, but this has been the Rosewell, uh, I don't know, remember what the letters are, it's the 4500 case with 15 bays, and we've got three 120s in the front with two 120 rounds, UGA CLCs, uh, full out on RAM, and a really badass server. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. You can apply a lot of these same techniques and things like that into the Fantex case as well. Uh, these are a little bit easier to mount in the Fantex case because you just mount them to the case directly. You don't mount them to a fan mold. Um, but just something to consider. Um, if you have any questions about these guys, uh, please, please ask. Um, ask in the comments, ask in Reddit, Discord, things like that. Um, and the reason why I'm going over this so much, and I wouldn't normally do a water cooling system with servers. Um, these were on sale for $29.99 and they might still be on sale when this video goes live. I know that they sold out temporarily. I don't know if they're trying to clear stock with them or what, but they're super awesome liquid coolers. 
They're cheaper than some of the Arctic coolers. They have way more cooling capacity. They'll be quieter. Uh, they look awesome. They're very, very reliable. And they fit in the Rosewell case, so that's the biggest thing. Um, that will work with 1366 as well. But, uh, yeah, so that's that. If you have any questions, like I said, please, please ask, and I'll do my best to answer them. And I will see you guys next time.